ABC 10 News Today. The vote that has America talking, another controversial new law involving abortion, details on Alabama's decision to ban it and the punishment for doctors refusing to comply. And a community grieving after a teenage boy uh, is honoring his good works, how Baca Mill is broadening his effort to help those in need. Plus, upgrades coming for Monroe Civic Center, but how will it affect traffic and is the city doing anything to ease the flow? Those answers coming up. Good morning. It is now 6 a.m. I'm Randy Ayala. I'm Chris Immersion. How are we doing? You check out the National Days? I already I oh. saw you over there doing it, so yeah. I figured I didn't have to. Of course. Of Let's course. See. I got us. <laughs> There's some weird ones. All right, what is it? Oh, you, oh, you got it. Oh, of course. Oh. I'm always strapped here. You got National <laughs> Hug a Tree Day. Nice. And uh, the other, there's so there's not many good ones. So basically, Reed just remembers the ones that he likes. So just get ready for two. Okay, here, hang on. I gotta look it up myself. <laughs> yeah, National Hug a Tree. It's National Do Something Good for Your Neighbor Day, which oh, I think well, we can appreciate. Good one. That. Well, Spencer's my neighbor, so I'm not doing that. That's, 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 that's not. Oh, come on. No. I got some great Be a good neighbors. Sport. No. Shout out to Buzz and Mary Frances. Do something <laughs> good for them today. I don't even know my neighbor's name. Come on, you gotta meet him. That is not very Louisiana of me. No. Always. I gotta so do, do something good. That is like the most. No, no, you have other neighbors besides Spencer. You could. Do I, I never talk to them. No. Everyone, do something nice for your neighbors today. No. Spencer, yeah. you're on your I own. I love that. If not. And if you do, let us know. Tag us on Facebook or something. Yeah. Hug a tree. If not. That's and hug other. a tree. You can tag us while you do that too. Yes. I want to see the pictures. Of hugging a tree. Yes. We'll go out. You can hug Reed. You can hug Reed. He's a tree. I'm Reed, not a tree. Reed is not oh, he's a tall tree. enough to be a tree. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Like a baby tree. <laughs> Depends what kind of tree. A baby tree. I love that. We got nice weather in the forecast today. Another sunny. Warm day. If you've enjoyed this week, you'll enjoy today and tomorrow. High temperatures getting back up near 90 with mostly sunny skies and no rain chances. This weekend, rain chances come back. Looking outside, though, it is a beautiful start. Sun's coming up in about 10 minutes. I got all your forecast details coming up here in a few minutes. That's your forecast first. Thank you, Reed. A series of states quickly moved to ban abortion weeks after conception. Tuesday, Alabama joined that list, passing the most restrictive abortion bill in the country. And setting the stage for a potential Supreme Court showdown, Camilla Burnell is in Washington to explain. A crowd convenes in Alabama's capital, waving signs and protesting the most restrictive abortion bill in the country. The passion echoed in the Senate chambers. You just aborted the state of Alabama. You just raped Alabama with this bill. Alabama's bill bans abortion at every stage of pregnancy. Those seeking an abortion would not be punished, but doctors performing the procedure would face 99 years in prison. Women would only be able to get an abortion if their life is at risk. There is no exception for rape or incest. In my district, the women do not want it in law, the elimination of uh, rape and incest. Alabama joins four other states this year that pass bills limiting abortion and 11 other states that introduce similar legislation this year. We must do everything that we can to protect life. Alabama's lawmakers say their bill is specifically designed to go to the Supreme Court and challenge the law of the land, Roe v. Wade. The makeup on the Supreme Court has changed where there's possibly enough conservatives on there who would believe Roe v. Wade is incorrectly decided. Governor Kay Ivey says it's now time for the U.S. Supreme Court to review the Roe v. Wade decision, which gave women the constitutional right to end a pregnancy. To a crime alert, a Lincoln Parish Sheriff's deputy is in custody for sex crimes involving juveniles. 35-year-old Christopher Sparks is charged with sexual battery and molestation. Louisiana State Police arrested him after Lincoln Parish Sheriff's Office contacted them over a complaint. Investigators have not released details about the allegations. Sparks resigned from his department prior to his arrest. He was booked into the Lincoln Parish Jail on a half million dollars bond. Family and friends are channeling their grief after 13-year-old Sebastian Martinez drowned in a stormwater-filled drainage canal last month. When he died, um, a bunch of the homeless people started coming out where he had been feeding them and giving to them that where nobody knew. Don is feeding the streets of Bauckhamville from her kitchen. She and his mother have joined forces with another nonprofit, Lazarus Mission. The pantry once full is now emptying out as the need grows. It gives me total satisfaction knowing that, that I can just be a small part of what's going on in this wonderful community. I guess that's why I'm so determined to be at every one of them. <laughs> to show people there, it, you don't have to turn to drugs. You don't have to turn to bad things because something happens in your life. 
Sebastian's mother and I see their cause <coughs> excuse me, as a way to fight gang violence and drugs. If you'd like to donate food, you can do so through a link to this story on MarkLemis.com. Parking lot renovations are paving the way for improvements at the Monroe Civic Center and the Salt Adler Recreational Center. About nine acres of Civic Center parking will be ripped up to the base and rebuilt, costing about $900,000 and could be finished by August, of course, weather permitting. The Salt Adler project will cost more than $100,000, including interior work. Monroe's engineering department will have signs posted and barricades up to help ease traffic problems. More construction happening over in El Dorado as well. Northwest Avenue is the hub for all things restaurants and businesses, but one lot under construction really has the town buzzing. The SBG Construction Company has been making progress on a vacant lot next to McDonald's. It used to house the old villas and Little Brothers restaurants. Many residents in the town have been wondering what will occupy the new spot. The Chamber of Commerce is interested in anyone who has suggestions about what restaurants they'd like to see. They sacrificed so much to keep our country free, and yet there are hundreds of homeless veterans living on the streets of the Arklamis. Our second annual Homeless Veterans Food Drive is now underway. Last year, we collected 10 and a half tons of food. NBC10 is partnering with the United Way, the Wellspring, and Max Fresh Markets once again this year. You can drop off any non-perishable food items at any Max Fresh Market, Jackson Street Church of Christ, the First United Methodist Church in Monroe, and right here at the NBC10. NBC 10 Studios in Weston Row. Together, we can get our homeless veterans the support they need. All day today, we will be looking at the wonderful and unusual things that are uniquely Louisiana. In this hour, we're getting a look at a national historic landmark right in our own backyard. It's a site that dates back to the Stonehenge and features nearly 2 million cubic yards of soil that was shaped into stunning landscapes. NBC 10's Michelle Martin takes us to Poverty Point. There's nothing like this anywhere in the world. If you head east on I-20 in Louisiana and you drive far enough, you'll find yourself in Epps. That's where you'll find Poverty Point, a World Heritage Site that's 3,400 years in the making. The Native Americans associated with this Poverty Point culture chose to build this massive um, mound complex here in northeast Louisiana. So it's the only place you can find it in the whole world. Park Ranger Mark Brink says the beauty and history of Poverty Point lures people from all corners. People from across the world, right? Lots of people from, from Europe, uh, Asia, all these other places that wouldn't normally visit this place are coming. Like Hans Van Beek and his wife, two Baton Rouge residents originally from the Netherlands. I think uh, the age of the, of the site and the magnitude of the site are, uh, you know, are uh, not just unique for Louisiana, but unique for the whole United States, for that matter. Hans and his wife have their eyes set on the birds, but they say one of their favorite things about the state is its slow southern pace. I think the, the pace of living and uh, you know, the, the, the culture of, of Louisiana in terms of easygoing and, and not uh, the pace that you find in the northern part of the United States. <laughs> and a calm, serene atmosphere is exactly what you'll find at Poverty Point. We know very little about these people, but they did something that was really incredible. So, yeah, I think that's something good. Poverty Point is a National Historic Landmark, one of the highest honors for an archaeological site. In 2014, Poverty Point achieved the highest honor of all when the United Nations named it a World Heritage Site. There are only three other archaeological sites in the U.S. with that distinction. We want you to tell us what you think is uniquely Louisiana. Right now, go to our Facebook page and tell us what you love about Louisiana or what makes this state stand out. All day today, we'll be going through your comments and what you could share even will appear on the news. And coming up in our next half hour, we'll talk to a local chef, Corey Barr, about the flavors and foods he uses in his cooking that are uniquely Louisiana. Tabasco. Okay. No. Oh, not Tabasco. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean. Not Tabasco. Cajun seasoning. Well, you have to wait until the interview airs. I, I don't want to wait. I'm tired of waiting. Nope, you got to wait. All right, coming up, we'll introduce you to a nine-year-old boy making a big difference in the wrestling community. His name is Bo Palmer, and we're sharing his mission to help youngsters after the deadly tornado coming up. But first, here's Reed with that commute cast. Commute's looking good for today. We got lots of sunshine in this forecast. It's about to come up in a minute or two. Temperatures sitting in the 60s this afternoon, warming up in the upper 80s. Some spots can be seen that first 90-degree temperature of the year today. Today, tomorrow, look good this weekend. Not quite. The storms are back in the forecast. Got those details coming up for you here soon on NBC 10 News Today.
I own Washita. The opinions and views expressed are those of the Washita citizen and do not necessarily reflect those of Next Star Broadcasting. Mission Broadcasting. This station is sponsors or employees.